Sorry, I'm just trying to look for the clicker. Hi, good morning everyone. Thank you for being here. It was kind of weird when I heard about uh, the little description on myself just now because it's, it's like a convergence of my entire life <laughs> in <laughs> this morning because of all the different things that I'm involved in. But um, they're things which uh, mean a lot to me, um, partly because of my own personal journey, which I will share on a little bit later on today. Um, let me just work this. You know, it's been said that in one's life, one will either have been a caregiver, is a caregiver, or will be a caregiver. This is food for thought, especially since we're going to spend the next few minutes exploring the role that family has in supporting a patient or a care recipient and how, in turn, the community can support the family in that role. Uh, what I will be doing is really talking about um, what caregivers experience, um, how families can support that, but families themselves need support as well. So I'm going to be sharing um, various community resources that there are. So for those of you who are, who are on this journey, just remember as a patient, you need not be alone. As a family looking after your loved one, you need not be alone because there are many, many resources out there. So first of all, we're going to watch this uh, video. Song, come on. Excuse me. Perhaps we, could. Perhaps we could replay the video. I think we need yeah. to turn up the volume of it. So let's on, take it. I don't it. even know how to stop. <laughs> I'm technology we have challenged. JC down here to help us. Yeah. Okay. Shall we start from the beginning of the video? Where's the clicker? You start out, you're more of a care partner, but depending on the illness as it progresses, you become a caregiver. Stay in the game. 
Oh, I can't move this. <laughs> Okay. Okay. As Lorne Ali, uh, Ali says, you really need to play the hand that life deals you. You can either fold or just let it overtake you, or you can stay in the game. So here, caregivers are the red thread. In a recent ethnographic study conducted by the National Council of Social Service, Family caregivers were described as the main care coordinators, acting as a red thread, trying to tie together the fragmented pieces of their family members' care across several different touch points. Clinicians, hospital stays, polyclinic visits, dealing with social service agencies and other community services. They therefore play a very key role in supporting the patient in his journey to recovery. There were nine key insights drawn from this study as documented by the publication, Who Cares? After interviewing and video shadowing 10 caregivers who cared in the most complex of cases, these caregivers took care of either a care recipient with a mental illness or more than one care recipient or a care recipient with multiple issues, or they cared for someone while they themselves needed care. And these were the key insights. And some of you might identify with this. Caregivers are in a constant survival mode, watching out for or responding to crisis situations. They do not have the capability or time to think of how best to improve their situation. The quality of assistance which caregivers receive is dependent on the knowledge and experience of the providers they meet. Assistance received is based on financial health instead of family dynamics or circumstances. As such, some caregivers with poor family support will then become very isolated and not get the help that they really need. The third finding was that because of a lack of coordination and confusion as to what schemes are available, caregivers did not understand how the social services worked, where they sought help, and instead they tried to navigate this landscape and fill in the gaps themselves. Caregivers also want to take a break from the daily psychological and physical stress of caring for their loved ones but are unable to find suitable avenues. Some of them may be unaware of the need for self-care or may feel guilty when trying to do so. I wonder how much of this resonates with some of you. I, I, for myself, um, when I found these findings, you know, they really struck a chord within me. There are more findings to share. The caregiving experience redefines family relationships. I think we saw that earlier in the video. Forcing families to continuously adapt and share their roles and responsibilities. They struggle to trust others, to talk openly, safely and directly with each other about caregiving issues. Caregivers do not know how to plan for transitions in life stages and are unable to trust in any plans they might make as they know the situation is unpredictable and they have to keep changing plans. Caregivers often lack awareness, skills and resources needed along their caregiving journey that would help them to be confident in themselves and assist them to be better long-term caregivers. It is difficult for caregivers to look at the caregiving journey as a positive and manageable experience amidst the countless negative experiences that they may encounter. And caregivers prefer to shoulder their burdens alone. For them, and I was guilty of this, they think that they will be able to get things done faster and easier. I was a caregiver for my father for six years and another two for my mother who just passed away in July this year. And at times, caregiving was a very, very lonely experience, um, but it was incumbent, I felt, 
to journey with my parents as they struggled with the physical challenges and mental challenges that they had. A lot of times, we think that the patient can handle things by themselves. But you know, a burden shared is a burden halved. So for those of us who do have a loved one who's a patient or a care recipient, think of yourself as a fellow journeyer in that journey. But at the same time, don't think that you should journey on that by yourself. There are many people around you and all you have to do is to show that vulnerability that you have or that you feel and be able to journey with your loved one in a more effective way. Though caregiving can be a very significantly moving experience for us, our needs as caregivers are very often overlooked. Most times, our healthcare system focuses mainly on the patient, and caregivers who are suffering caregiver burnout may go unnoticed. Caregivers themselves often don't see themselves as caregivers and may not even recognize these symptoms. These may include weight gain, weight loss, poor sleep, daily habits or routines which get whittled away so that they have no personal time for themselves, and then clinical depression, symptoms of which they may not understand or recognize either. In a recent New York Times article entitled Love and Burnout, Caregivers to Need Care, experts suggested that the best antidote to burnout was to build a team rather than to handle everything yourself. And if you think about it, the best team to build is with our families, where we can share the responsibility of caregiving. This would involve meeting, talking openly, and sharing responsibility. So for instance, one could designate a particular family member to take care of the medical appointments and liaising with the doctors and nurses looking after their loved one. Another could take care of the meals, and some other relatives could be rostered into taking that loved one for occasional outings. And that's what the caregiver system is all about. Having that care recipient being supported by his or her family, which works as a team, and in turn, that loved one and his family should be supported by the community. The imperative that comes out of this is that caregivers should not feel alone in their journey of caregiving. You need not be alone in this. As families, you need not be alone in this. So I thought I'd share with you a number of services in the community which are run by social service organizations who support caregivers. Those who support caregivers in a very, in a general way are, and one of them is uh, AWAS uh, Caregivers Connect. And this service serves caregivers through information and referrals, conducting psychosocial training program, uh, which is called the Caregiving Life Skills Training Series, which helps family caregivers to practice self-care by equipping them with essential skills and essential strategies to deal proactively with caregiving challenges. And having a community network for caregivers uh, by caregivers called Caregivers Connect, where members can engage, interact and share with one another. Another organization is the Caregiving Welfare Association. And, and these are numbers and access points for you to take note of. Um, and I'm going to just describe each one in, in, in very brief detail to give you a, a feel of what these services have because there might be a number here that uh, you may wish to call. There is always help out there. I think sometimes the challenge is knowing where to find that support. Uh, so you need not be alone in this. The Caregiving Welfare Association, or CWA for short, provides information and referral services to caregivers seeking assistance in accessing health-related community resources or service providers um, in purchasing home assistive devices and daily living aids. There's also a caregiver support group called, run by Touch, 
And this service provides a range of holistic home-based healthcare services for the elderly and support services for caregivers, including caregiver training, care management, and they also have a Facebook support group called Caregiver Support Group Singapore. For caregivers or persons with mental illness, there's Caregivers Alliance Limited, CAL. Uh, I need to declare my interest. I'm a board member of CAL, amongst the other things that I do. CAL's signature caregiving program is its Caregivers to Caregivers, C2C we call it, Caregivers to Caregivers program, education program. And this is a 12-week free training program which provides caregivers or persons with mental illness with in-depth information about mental illness and how best to care for them. From this program, caregivers also learn how to take care of themselves. They receive emotional support and become empowered in their caregiving journey. For those unable to attend the 12-week C2C program, there is an individualized support program, which we call ITS, where a caregiver support specialist will meet the caregiver in a location convenient to the caregiver to give individual training and support. And CAL also has peer support groups so that caregivers can encourage, share, and network amongst each other. CAL actually does these sessions in partnership with Tantok Singh Hospital, here in the hospital. So far, seven C2C sessions have been completed, and an eighth session will be completed by December of this year. We anticipate that there will be 95 um, C2C graduates from the sessions, and of the eight classes graduating this year, five sessions uh, were in English and three sessions in Mandarin. CAMI, or Caregiver Association of the Mentally Ill, also provides support for family caregivers who take care of loved ones with mental illness. The Alzheimer's Disease Association has a caregiver support centre which runs caregiver support groups in English, Mandarin and Malay for caregivers looking after people with dementia. And Stepping Stones Group in IMH is a support group for caregivers of patients with psychiatric illness. This group provides support, information and knowledge of psychiatric illness, medication and general management of difficult behaviour. There are also a number of other community resources that I wanted to share with you. Um, and these are some of them. So these are the numbers, if you look at them. CREST, CREST stands for Community Resource Engagement and Support Team. Since 2012, the Agency for Integrated Care has started working with community-based organisations to set up CREST, to reach out to persons with uh, people with dementia and depression, as well as for caregivers who need the additional support to care for their loved ones. CREST links the community, residents with mental health and social support networks through outreach and education. I, th I, think, I believe there are now 10 CREST teams. Uh, um, so these are some of them, okay, which you can contact. Okay, give you a few minutes to have a look and maybe take note of these as well. So you can see they're all over Singapore. There are also a number of Facebook sites which focus on caregivers. So for those of you who, like me, are very, very in, in and uh, use Facebook a lot, these Facebook support groups would be useful. And I've listed them out here for you. Oops, got more. And these other resources for caregivers include the Singapore Silver Pages. And this is a one-stop portal by AIC, 
which provides resources on community-based care, financial assistance and caregiving, including caregiver training courses. There's also a caregiver's training grant that you can tap. And this provides caregivers with an annual training grant of $200, regardless of income levels, to attend training to improve their care for their care recipients, physical and social emotional needs. There are also financial assistance schemes. And these include Elder Shield, which is a severe disability insurance scheme. In the event of severe disability, Elder Shield policyholders will receive a monthly cash payout for a period of time, depending on the plan. A severe disability is the inability to perform at least three activities of daily living. And these would include washing, dressing, feeding, toileting, mobility or transferring. So if your loved one has three of these challenges, this is a good place to, to check out. The assistive technology, assistive technology Fund also provides subsidies for persons with disabilities to acquire assistive technology devices. There's also LTA Cares, um, the LTA Cares, uh, which is a fund which caters uh, for, to the transport needs of working adults and students who are fin uh, financially and physically uh, challenged. And the Seniors Mobility and Enabling Fund, which is administered by AIC, which provides device consumables like milks and diapers and transport subsidies. Comcare too provides social assistance for low-income individuals and families. And there is the, the Foreign Domestic Workers Grant, which gives uh, low-income families $120 a month to hire foreign domestic workers. Uh, and if the care recipient cannot perform at least three uh, ADLs. On top of that, there is a foreign domestic workers levy concession for if you have someone who is elderly or a person with disabilities at home, it enables families to pay lower monthly levies uh, uh, for, for, for foreign domestic workers employed uh, to look after that person. And for, for persons with disabilities, there is a special needs trust company and special needs savings scheme to help plan for your loved one's future. So in closing, I just hope that these thoughts and resources that I've shared with you will provide a starting point uh, to those of you who are caregivers to see how you can share that, that burden. It's not really a burden, it's a joy to be able to journey with your loved one in this, but just remembering that you needn't do it by yourself. So I wish all of you the very best. And at this point in time... Yes, we'll be taking questions. Yeah. Can we first please give Anita a big round of applause? So we will be taking questions from you over here, as well as friends in the conference room. If you have any question, just let us know. Uh, we can hear you, actually, uh, from the conference room as well. So I would like to open up the floor. Anyone has any question for Ms. Anita Farm? I'll just take a moment just to make sure that in the conference room as well, do we have any questions? No? All right. Thank you, Ms. Anita Farm. Thank, Thank you, you for much. sharing with us for Thank today. You. Thank you.